Hello everyone, this is Dr. Nikita Nanwani Nathani, hashtag N3 here. And today and tomorrow, our target is to simplify the topic of brainstem syndromes with easy, easy tricks. Like I know that this is one of the dreaded topics amongst the students. And I want to make sure that this becomes one of the favorite topics with each one of you after you watch these series of videos that I'll be just detailing to you that how we will go about this brainstem syndromes. After you watch this series, I want you to please let me know in the comments whether this topic has now become one of your favorite ones from Reddit to the favorite one. So what is the plan is today and tomorrow, that is 22nd and 23rd of December, we are going to crack this topic of uh, brainstem syndromes. And what we are going to do basically is uh, we are going to look at, uh, just give me a minute. Yes, it's working. Okay. So what we are going to do is uh, we have this five series of uh, videos that we are going to have. Part one will be the must know mnemonics, which is this uh, video basically, where I'll be discussing the must know mnemonics that we should be knowing to understand the brainstem syndromes. Then part two will be, then we'll go to the brainstem from midbrain, pons and medulla. So part two, midbrain, part three, pons and part four, medullary syndromes, the medial, the lateral. In midbrain, we'll see the mnemonics for Weber's, Benedict's, Nagel, all of that in pontine. We'll see the millard gubler Raymond syndrome, Fobili syndrome, the mnemonics for each one of them. I know that these names now sound scary, but as I said, be assured, all of you will master this topic after this series of videos. So these four videos will basically be there on the YouTube channel, an Academy Neat PG YouTube channel, today and tomorrow, that is 22nd and 23rd. By afternoon, these videos will be uploaded. And then to make sure, like I always say, whatever topic you read, uh, solve the MCQs, practice the MCQs so that it gives you confidence that you have mastered this topic. So to make that easy for you, we will culminate the series of brainstem syndromes with the KBMD episode. Now, what is KBMD? Convenega MD, which is a free live class on the Academy app that I take. It's going to be there tomorrow, 5 p.m., that is 23rd of December. And this KBMD will be dedicated to brainstem syndromes. It will be integrated with radiology, clinical scenarios, and everything. And it will include the previous year questions also of the brainstem syndromes. So basically, to make sure... And to give you that confidence that yes, you have mastered this topic, we are going to end the series with the KBMD on the Unacademy app. It's a free live class. The link of that would be in the description. You can register on that link. And the code to unlock that session is Dr. Nikita Life. So make sure that you watch all these four videos before this KBMD, which is there tomorrow 5 p.m. And then let's see where do you stand on the leaderboard in the KBMD episode of Brainstem Syndromes tomorrow, 5 p.m. So now let's start with the today's topic, the must-know mnemonics, the general mnemonics, basic mnemonics that we should know for brainstem syndromes. So we have the rule of four in the cranial nerves. So what is the rule of four? Above the pons, from the pons, and below the pons. So we have total 12 cranial nerves. Four are originating above the pons. Four are originating from the pons and four below the pons, that is from the medulla. Four above the pons, out of that, three and four cranial nerves are from the midbrain, right? The third and the fourth, oculomotor and trochlear, arise from midbrain. Four from the pons, that is five, six, seven, eight. And next four, nine, ten, eleven, twelve is from the medulla. So this also is very important to know because based on which cranial nerve is going, we can localize that syndrome to that particular part of the brainstem. So if I see that third cranial nerve is paralyzed, so I know that this is a midbrain syndrome, right? So uh, now going to the next part, which are the cranial nerves which arise from the medial location or the paramedian location? So let's say if this is the brainstem, we have midbrain, pons and medulla. This is the midline. So which cranial nerves arise in this paramedian location? Basically, they will be affected in the medial brainstem syndromes. This is very, very important, especially in differentiating your medial medullary syndrome from the lateral medullary syndrome. So here, the trick to remember is, remember the rule of 12. Now, just get table make the number 12 comes. Those cranial nerves are in the paramedian location. So we have three fours are 12. 
4 threes are 12, 6 twos are 12 and 12 ones are 12. So in these 3, 4, 6, 12, we have 12 which comes in their table. So the cranial nerves 3, 4, 6 and 12, they arise from the paramedial location. So basically these are the ones which will be affected in the medial brainstem syndromes. The rest 5, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, which the table mein 12 nahi aata hai, those would be lateral in location. So now I give you a trick here. You can see that cranial nerve 12 is paramedian location. So it will be affected in medial medullary syndrome or lateral medullary syndrome. It will be medial medullary syndrome. Cranial nerve 12 will be spared in lateral medullary syndrome. We will see all of this when we come to medullary syndrome in the video or uh, the part 3 that we will be having. Right? Part 3, part 4. Now, this is the basic that we should know. Remember 3, 4, 6, 12. And if you make a note of this, 3, 4, 6, 12. These are basically your motor cranial nerve nuclei belonging to the general somatic efferent column of the cranial nerves, right? So, 3, 4, 6, eye ka muscles, 12, tongue ka muscles. This is general somatic efferent, right? Efferent matlab motor, general somatic muscles of the eye and the tongue. So, 3, 4, 6, 12, they are paramedian in location, right? Now, look at this image here. You can get, uh, you get a lot of times these images where you are asked to identify the cranial nerves. So, this is the pons. Above the pons, 4, 3, 4 from the midbrain, 5, 6, 7, 8 from the pons, next and the next four will be from the medulla, right? 9, 10, 11, 12. Now, if you look at this, this is the dorsal aspect of the brainstem. You see the colliculi here, colliculi, midbrain cup, posterior part, dorsal part. This is the dorsal aspect. You see that in close relation to the colliculi is the pineal body. So, when there is a pineal gland tumor, it's going to compress on the colliculi. We'll see that in the brainstem, midbrain syndromes, the consa syndrome hota hai then. Right, just remember this relation. It will help you understand the syndrome better. From the dorsal aspect, the only cranial nerve which arises is the cranial nerve 4. Right, that is what we are seeing here from the dorsal aspect of the midbrain, but paramedian location. Ventral aspect is where you are seeing this pyramid and you have the third cranial nerve in the paramedian location. So, we saw paramedian location. This will be the sixth cranial nerve. Ponto medullary junction, paramedial location. And you will have the 12th cranial nerve, which has the medial origin from the medulla. 9, 10, 11, they have the lateral. So this is very, very important. Another frequently asked question. 12th, this is the 12th cranial nerve in between the pyramid and the olive. It has a medial origin, right? Your corticospinal tract, they decussate, crossing is in the lower medulla. You have the dorsal column, medial lemniscus. That is happening in the medulla, right? Spinothalamic tract crossing happens at the spinal cord level. Now, going to the next part, just to give you an overview, because we will come across this term MLF, medial longitudinal fasciculus. What is MLF? MLF connects the sixth cranial nerve nucleus with the contralateral third cranial nerve nucleus, right? So remember that MLF connects the sixth with the third contralateral nucleus, that is MLF, okay? Now, next one. The next mnemonic is very, very important. Medial brainstem syndromes are basically motor. That is M for M. Medial is motor. So we saw that in medial brainstem syndrome, motor cranial nerve nuclei, that is 3, 4, 6, 12 will be affected. Motor tract, that is the corticospinal tract, will be affected. Medial lemniscus, what is medial lemniscus? The dorsal column is basically what forms the medial lemniscus. Dorsal column, what sensation do they carry? So vibration and proprioception. So in which syndromes the vibration proprioception will go? The medial brainstem syndromes, not the lateral. Right, so in lateral medullary syndrome, you will not see loss of vibration and proprioception because it is medially located. And you have MLF, the medial longitudinal fasciculus, which connects the sixth and the third, that will be affected in your medial brainstem syndromes. At what level, what will go? That all we'll see in the uh, subsequent videos that are going to come up. So remember, corticospinal tract affected, that basically causes your hemiplegia, right? The contralateral hemiplegia. So this is for M is medial, M is motor. What is affected? Motor cranial nerve nuclei 3, 4, 6, 12, corticospinal tract, medial lemniscus, and the MLS. What comes in the lateral brainstem syndromes? 
लैटरल मतलब लोकेटेड ऑन द साइड राइट सो लैटरल मतलब लोकेटेड ऑन द साइड एस फॉर सेंसरी एस फॉर साइड सेंसरी क्रेनियल नर्व न्यूक्लियर लाइक योर फिफ्थ सेवेंथ नाइन्थ टेंथ इलेवेंथ एथ ऑल ऑफ दिस विल गो इन द लैटरल स्पाइनोथैलामिक ट्रैक्ट स्पाइनोथैलामिक ट्रैक्ट विच कैरीज पेन एंड टेम्परेचर फ्रॉम द ट्रंक एंड द लिम्स ऑफ द ऑपोजिट साइड राइट सो दिस इज ऑफ द ट्रंक एंड लिम्स ऑफ द ऑपोजिट साइड sympathetic chain as for sympathetic chain even that is in the lateral mid or lateral brain stem syndrome sympathetic gone it causes your horner syndrome right horner syndrome spinal cerebellar tract as a spinal cerebellar cerebellar tract it will lead to ataxia right it will lead to ataxia remember as for sight as for sensory so spinal thalamic tract sympathetic chain spinal cerebellar tract sensory cranial nerve nuclei these will be affected in the lateral brain stem syndromes Now look at this uh, image here, which helps us localize these uh, cranial nerves. So medial three, four in the midbrain, six in the pons, and twelve in the medulla. So three, four, six, twelve, the motor cranial nerve nuclei. Then you have the corticospinal tract that is the motor causing hemiplegia. The dorsal column, medial lemniscus, again the contralateral side. So all of this will be contralateral. the cranial nerves whenever they are affected that is on the ipsilateral side okay that is like the lower motor neuron lesion it will be ipsilateral side rest would be contralateral side then you can see the rest of the cranial nerves right the seventh cranial nerve fifth eighth ninth tenth all of these are located on the side so then you have the sympathetic and the spinothalamic tract i might be hiding this let me take the image okay sympathetic and spinothalamic tract s s they would go on the side okay they would go on the side and this is about the image here the next one just a brief overview of the which artery is affected in which syndrome like the midbrain the pons and the medulla so for that we should have an overview of the posterior circulation okay the posterior circulation so what do we have in posterior circulation the two vertebral arteries uniting to form the basilar artery so we have the two vertebrals uniting to form the basilar terminal branch of basilar is the posterior cerebral artery so as we go from below up medulla pons and midbrain these are the arteries affected so in the medullary syndrome we have vertebral artery ka branches you can see this anterior spinal artery coming medially so this is medial medullary syndrome is anterior spinal artery then we have pica pica comes from vertebral laterally that is lateral medullary syndrome so medial medullary asa lateral medullary pica then comes the pons pons is the basilar artery and its lower wala branch basilar and its lower branch which is the ica so medial pontine would be basically basilar and lateral pontine the lateral branch going that is ica would be lateral pontine and then above is the terminal branch of basilar that is the pca here which will cause the midbrain syndromes be it medial or lateral so look at this image here what do we see here just a reinforcement of what we learned so in the medullary syndrome the medial one it is the anterior spinal artery the lateral one is the pica right so the vertebral ka branch asa and the pica pons mein the medial wala is the basilar lateral wala is the ica midbrain mein everywhere it is the posterior cerebral artery because many times rather than just asking the diagnosis they would ask you which artery is affected which artery is thrombosed given the clinical scenario which artery is affected right so just a quick review that in the midbrain be it medial or lateral it is the posterior cerebral artery in the pons it is the basilar artery in the medial pontine ica in the lateral pontine in the medulla vertebral ke branches medial wale mein it is the anterior spinal artery lateral wale mein it is the pica right so this is a brief overview of the arteries so what did we just learn here is basically the mnemonics of the rule of 4 4 above the pons 4 from the pons 4 below the pons 3 4 6 12 are medial and they are affected in medial brain stem syndromes then you have the m4 m wala mnemonic that is medial may the motor are affected 
motor corticospinal tract is affected mlf and the medial lemniscus that is vibration proprioception will go lateral may s for side s for sensory so the sensory cranial nerve nuclei spinothalamic tract that is pain and temperature sympathetic chain and the spinal cerebellar tract will be affected in the side valla then we just saw the various arteries vertebral and its branches medulla basilar and its lower branch pons and tca in the midbrain so that was for this part 1 of the brain stem syndromes where we just discussed the must know mnemonics that will simplify the further videos okay the understanding of the further syndromes in the part 2 we'll see midbrain syndromes which will be coming up very soon today and then we'll have the pontine syndromes then the medullary syndromes and then finally the kbmd episode on 23rd that is at 5 pm of free life class do let me know in the comments how did you find this video and uh, i am looking forward to your comments and feedback for more topics and the difficult topics that you want me to simplify for you thank you so much for watching this one i'll see you in the next one till then goodbye take care and keep studying keep revising and keep winning thank you so much